sir we can start no wait for me the name that that quite a sir i have started the recording just a minute good morning sir good morning yeah good morning sir many students dr chattopadhyay is contemporary of dr tike basu is it not sir Uh, no, no, I am slightly serious. Okay, oh, yes. very good. <laughs> very nice to see you are active. <laughs> but Corona has retarded my activity. Yeah, but also we are learning many things due to Corona. Of so course, fitness yes. is most important than any other things. Right. sir can we start now i am ready yes, yes please sir. yes sir yes good morning one and all honorable chief guest and keynote speaker professor av chattopadhyay respected pro vice chancellor sir the ifa university tripura respected registered sir the ifa university tripura respected dean sir fst the ifa university tripura all hod hod of our me department senior professors my dear colleagues all participants and my beloved students it's really give me immense pleasure to welcome our dignitaries in this webinar organized by the department of mechanical engineering the ifa university tripura thank you sir for being here in this morning and also i proud to say our university has escalated to great horizon of success and today it is seen as one of the top university in india it is autonomous with academic excellence a benchmark to measure co curriculum excellence and a center which create responsible citizen we are very grateful to our honorable pro vice chancellor sir professor biplob haldar sir it is because of his valuable guidance encouragement and support that all this has been possible now today our university has become dream destination for many myself amit kumar rana assistant professor me department of this university so as per our program schedule i am giving a brief introduction of the career avenue at present time before that i request professor dharanjit dev varma please play our university video professor dharumbit it's over to you
ఆర్టిస్టి త్రిపుర so it was our short video for the university so now uh, i am giving a short uh, brief for the career avenues so engineering has different branches so all of we know that and it can be applied to various fields core engineering like mechanical civil electrical electronics it healthcare hospitality aerospace road to heavy machinery and many others engineering plays a vital role now a day we want a robust engineering system so a robust engineering system is an interdisciplinary field of engineering comprises with domain knowledge and advanced technologies and engineering management that focuses on how to design how to integrate it and manage complex system over their life cycle the engineering education is now interdisciplinary approach in conjunction with a robust product system we live in an age where technologies has some or gone beyond imaginations as to how it impacts our day to day lives student need to ensure they are industry ready by the end of their program along with their own domain knowledge the technologies such as 3d printing which enables rapid prototyping and additive manufacturing have been the building of model such quicker way so let us go for the past and go for the future go confidently in the direction of your dream lives the life you imagines and that to be fulfilled so there are so many opportunities after doing the engineering degree it is from campus placement it is in the banking insurance finance psu in defense service in ies service also through gate they can go for mtech phd mba study and they also can go for the study in abroad so in the campus placement it may be on campus it may be off campus or it may be full campus so this three types of opportunity engineering student can avail so placement by a third party placement aptitude test so there are some example i have mentioned here it is mcad elitmas or cocubes so these are the third party placement aptitude test they can also take this advantage <coughs> so in the public sector undertaking there are so many opportunities from the engineering backgrounds so it from the gate score and yearly exam for different uh, organizations 
and they can go for the abroad preferably in uk in canada in usa in singapore australia etc industry 4 is that technology transformation here industry 4 wherein advances in automations mechatronics robotics and artificial intelligence are used and has paved the way for the mass productions ai is an interdisciplinary science with multiple approaches but advances in machine learning and deep learning are creating a paradigm shift in virtually every sector of the tech industry technology which was seen as a facilitator of our work is now core to our daily lives from the alarm clock that wakes up to memory mattress technology is integrated to our survival the change has created a need for specialized even in engineering so an engineer has three primary role to fulfill at any point in their career firstly analyzing the need for technology in a certain area creating a prototype as a solution to the need and finally replications of the prototype for mass production any engineering graduate is supposed to perform any or all of these above tasks at different times during their career so nowadays the topics which enrich students capabilities such as data analysis data crunching and capturing data using iot artificial intelligence and machine learning and those are now part of our uz program in many reputed engineering colleges further mechanisms such as technology enabled learning and project based learning are built into the coursework by these institutes this means the traditional domain skill <coughs> must be enriched through courses such as iot <coughs> robotics automation artificial intelligence <coughs> like a programming technique which provide a unique edge to graduate so that they are prepared by companies during hearing process <coughs> such as ai institution have dependent their industry engagements and have introduced industry ready training and industry driven courses it is true that a large number of engineers who are in the market are unemployable this does not mean the engineering education or the future engineering is dark actually corporate no longer one engineer who only traditional domain, domain knowledge or know how to code simply they are looking at other skills and other on the job experience in the form of internship in the field of 
interdisciplinary area when it comes to skills the knowledge of robotics mechatronics iot artificial intelligence python among others are considered crucial skills so engineers must have mindset to continue lifelong self learning for career stability and growth so i have shared some sample uh, ppt so everyone <coughs> has the dream success comes to those who act properly इमिडिएटली and follow these principles and you can make your dream comes true by robert h schuller so thank you now i would like to request our pro vice chancellor sir to please give your formal welcome address for this webinar kindly sir over to you yeah <clears throat> thank you uh, very good presentation given by professor amit kumar rana so good morning sir namaskar our chief guest today dr amit mm. koron chattopadhyay ex professor of mechanical engineering department iit kharagpur we have with us dr e ranganath register of ekpai university tripura dr priyankshana board thakur dean faculty of science and technology mm. then we have dr subodh dev verma uh, department head of uh, mechanical engineering then we have brought uh, faculty members from ikfa university tripura then we have students of our university and here notably we would also like to mention the participating institution uh, uh, we have tripura university we have barpeta polytechnic assam nagao polytechnic assam गयेशपुर गवर्नमेंट पॉलिटेक्निक डॉक्टर बी सी राय पॉलिटेक्निक दुर्गपुर बेलटेक फ्रॉम तमिलनाडु चेन्नई हल्दिया इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी नूर इस्लाम सेंटर फॉर हायर एजुकेशन तमिलनाडु एम बी सी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी पूर्व बर्धमान एन आई टी शिलचर एन आई टी पाटना स्वामी विवेकानंद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी कोलकाता techno international batanagar indian maritime university and from several other universities uh, students and faculty members who are joining today uh, i am very much uh, privileged and delighted to welcome everyone for this program today where uh, our chief guest dr ashit varan chattopadhyay will be talking this webinar is on job prospects and btech projects as we have seen A good presentation given by Professor Amit Kumar Rana. You see, we are going through a big transition. You know, this transition uh, is happens not every year. It happens certain period. And we, uh, those who are very young, those of our age group, and Dr. Ashish Bhavan Chattopadhyay, we are also seeing a big change in our own life. You know, we have seen uh, in our school days, college days, we have seen how computer came. we have seen but last few years two years from 2020 till today all our young children in, including who are in the schools baby i mean class 2 3 1 2 3, they may not understand the transition because they will be seeing first time what is offline online they are born with the online education these children of who are year 3 4 5 they may not understand but many students who are attending this and the faculty member attend this today's program we have seen how big changes has come 
all the students and everyone that 2020 onward till date big drastic change has come the online education has come and you see everything we are purchasing through e-commerce through internet though it was there earlier everything was there but the kind of uses it is getting into our own home every day it was never been there so that transition we have seen another transition people like us in because many, many students they may not understand because from 2000 onward we have seen a big change has come in our own life our students may not understand all the students who are attending they may not understand they are born during that time what happened before that during that time big changes has come like uh, suppose you say 1850 onward rail line was was installed across the world even in our country india and then steam engine came and there were the big uh, changes came in the world which were not part of it none of us were part of that then electricity generation started steam engine was there in the beginning then electricity started from uh, 1900 uh, 1898 1900 2 3 onward electricity came then all motor came uh, big changes has come then motor vehicles came uh, 1900 uh, 10 20 onward a lot of things came now 2000 onward big changes came there all over the world in our country itself that uh, uh, fiber optic cables started internet were laid down so there is a big changes like railways rail lines were installed similarly uh, internet cables was installed we are getting internet but we may not know exactly many of us know or many of us are ignorant it is coming through satellite it is coming through underground cable something coming through japan eastern coast something comes through western so therefore big changes has come from 19 in our own life how changes have come and of course the kind of presentation given uh, uh, sometimes back we see all engineering all students of engineering and science we have to understand artificial intelligence machine learning robotics 3d printing iot virtual reality augmented reality these are all part and parcel of life whether we are mechanical these are all actually originated from electrical engineering in the beginning computer science also all came from electrical in the beginning but today these are all everybody's part it is not that oh these belong to only electrical computer science no it belongs to our everybody's life and earlier all these technologies like when a computer came sometime in 1964 onward in our country in tata steel and all and slowly ibm came 73 74 onward every companies big companies were using computer uh, we uh, 1983 uh, started computer using computer i was also a professional in computer line that time all computers were confined to only the industries only education institution research institution and also in the industry but then we have found it has come to our home personal computer pc then laptop then ultimately mobile this mobile is something very very too much it is all <laughs> everybody is having with this so we are going through a very big transition many of the students you are part of it and we also are part of that and these changes are going on in human civilization but what is good that the whole world is going to a better life like mobile phone was very costly when it started 97 98 it cost was 20 rupees per call getting a call 20 rupees giving call also 20 rupees so costly it has become very cheap we are the cheapest I mean, in the telephone call is the cheapest in our country these are coming when electricity will be very cheap because what is coming electricity will be generated by uh, solar power every household will have, will have solar power plant a small way which they will use and rest of the times will be going to the grid so electricity generation will be very very cheap and we will see in our own life by 2030 onward all the vehicles will be converted to electric vehicles already government of india has taken a decision so therefore we will find that ic engine etc what we are studying and using studying has to be there fundamental knowledge is important but utilization will be confined to certain areas maybe for aeroplane in the beginning for sometimes to go uh, this fuel will be there uh, fossil fuel but uh, many vehicles will be converted to uh, electric driven vehicle where all the comp all the electric all the vehicles will be fully computer one another very big computer system will be there inside iot will be there machine learning artificial all will be there therefore it is a time for all of us all our students and all who are in academics 
to also study these uh, application areas. But let me again tell you, we have a very, our professor, Dr. Ashit Varun Chattopadha will be, sir, you are like my professors. But you see, fundamental knowledge will be always there. Basic knowledge of Newton theory or Einstein theory or whatever you are studying in Maxwell theory, all the motors, what we study, electrodynamics, all will be there, fundamental. But what is happening, the applications are changing. So changing the time with the applications in engineering colleges also in the four years time, we have to also give the test of the applications, what is happening today. However, fundamental has to be there as we know that fundas are very important. And if you have the fundamentals, we can understand that. People like us, we studied quite a long time back engineering. Our Saris also studied very early. I know there are professors like one uh, professor in control engineering. Uh, his book is very uh, Nagarad and Madan Gopal. That Mr. Nagarad, he is, has written a book on artificial intelligence, machine learning. So therefore, he is very old. He, is, sorry, he may be of your age, Nagarad Madan Gopal control theory writer. So, you know, because of the knowledge of fundamentals, even people our age and our professor is, they are also pick up this knowledge. And whatever knowledge has come today, artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, if I, if we can allow to speak, it is nothing new. We are knowing many things, but names are new, applications are new. And because of the internet, advent of internet, a new method of data storage, cloud computing is coming. But all the knowledge has come from the fundamental knowledge. Therefore, whatever we do, fundamental knowledge has to be there and we must build up on that. So we are very happy that today uh, we have Dr. Chattopadhyay with us and we have got several participants from different institutions uh, to understand the future job prospects and BTEC projects. And we, are, uh, we hope that these uh, programs uh, will create a lot of awareness among the participants and also we'll be very happy to listen from our Professor Chattopadhyay on his views so that we can also learn and take it forward. I wish this program will be of great success. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Most Thank, you. Thank you, sir, for your valuable input for this uh, webinar. So let us now to introduce the man who does not need any introduction and well known all over the world for his wisdom and knowledge of our honorable chief guest and keynote speaker, Professor A.B. Chattopadhyay. But it is our responsibility to introduce our eminent speaker with the participants. So I would like to request Dr. P.R. Bhatsakur, Dean, FST, the IFI University, Tripura, for introducing our speaker with the participants. Dean, sir, always encourage us for organizing such type of event. So I request, sir, please introduce our speaker with the audience. It's over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Amit, for giving me this opportunity. Before doing that, I have already seen some students are raising their hands, Subrata Jaina and some of Mr. Nath. So I'd like to request the students to write their queries in the chat box. At the end, uh, we'll respond to all your queries. And later, I means after the end of this, uh, so Professor Dr. A.P. Chattopad Day's uh, lecture, then we can take up all of your questions one by one. Now, uh, I would like to give the brief uh, introduction of Professor Dr. Ashit Baran Chattopad Day. He's a retired professor of uh, from IIT Kharagpur from Mechanical Engineering Department. He has begun his teaching and research career at Jadavpur University, Kolkata. After that, he has joined in IIT Kharagpur in Mechanical Engineering Department. Uh, throughout his career, along with regular teaching, Dr. Chattopadhyay carried out research in various directions in areas of manufacturing. He guided more than 20 PhD scholars. He has published more than 200 technical papers in reputed journals. Also, he has published a book on machining and machine tool. It is published by John Willie and Sons. He completed a number of projects funded by Goft of India and some national and international industries. 
Dr. A.B. Chattuvade, he has also prepared uh, video lectures, online video lectures for NPTEL uh, programs. He attended and presented papers in many national and international conferences. Dr. Certified Dai has served various administrative duties and responsibilities, such as head of the Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIT Kharagpur, several other administrative work within the institute and the department in different capacities. He has extensively visited Italy, Yugoslavia, UK for his postdoctoral research and also he has visited Japan and Bangladesh for presenting research papers and chairing sessions in international conferences. He has also attended short-term research works at UK under Indo-UK Joint Research Program. He has been honored with various awards like President of India Award for Best Paper of the Year in 1968, he has been awarded for best paper in machining presented in 18th AIMDT, uh, AIMTDR conference in 1998. Uh, he, he has been awarded British Council Fellowship Award under YSES scheme. He has been awarded Fellow of National Academy of Engineers. Other educational research educational and research activities like uh, he is the member of CSIR. He is also the member of assessment committee of CSIR. He was also the member of AICT committee, member of assessment of activities of different engineering colleges, he was the member of assessment committee of AICT for funding, visiting abroad of teachers for conferences and opening empty MTech uh, courses. He was also the member of selection committee, BIT, Khulna, Bangladesh, B College, IITs, and ISM. So he was the member of professional bodies. He is the member of right, in different uh, professional bodies, like the fellow of International Council of Consultants. He has been, uh, he has given, delivered, invited lectures uh, several times. And he has three patents, and jointly he has three patents. One is on special brace type super abrasive wheels, plasma spray coating of advanced ceramics, instrument for slope measurement in motion of the vehicles. This is the brief introduction of Professor Dr. A. B. Chattopadhyay. Over to you, Dr. Amit. Professor Amit, Amit Kumar Rana. Yes, sir. So now I am requesting uh, Professor Evi Chattopadhyay, sir. Uh, and also I am welcoming, sir, for his talk. Sir, please. Good morning. Good morning. Am I audible? Audible, everybody? Yes. Okay. Yes, Good morning. Yes. Good morning, sir. I forgot for what purpose I came. After hearing all these beautiful speeches by the Pro Vice Chancellor and uh, Rana and others, excellent. If God asks me what you want to be now, I shall say, Sir, give me back my student life. I can learn more the way I was learning today. So teaching ends, but learning does not. Excellent. And I heard about this university which I never knew earlier, the first time. Very good. You are very proud of this institute, as Rana has explained already. So, I am not uh, taking more time for explaining further or extending what Professor Rana and uh, especially our uh, Professor Halder has told. All are very, very correct, relevant, and very enlightening. Yes, we are really, we started very earlier. I joined as associate lecturer in Jadavpur University in 1966. Then in 1980, I joined IIT Kharagpur as a professor. Since then, I was there for 28 years without any promotion because professor post is the last post. 
Then I was forced to stay there three years more for being emeritus professor. Here after retiring, I had to continue for several requests from several corners to be associated with teaching. Only one year back, just before the, the corona started working, I have given up all formal teaching profession. But still now, I am uh, giving this kind of lecture on and off and online, time to time, as and when requested. With little brief, I just start. Still now. So about BTEC, the contents, the programs, and especially what facilities and scopes exist in your institute and developing and developed in other institutes in India, as usual, have been narrated nicely by Professor Rana. I say Professor Rana because any teacher is professor for, for me. Very good, I'm very proud. But the problem is, next, I keep on doing it. Now I shall present my presentation. So my point of discussion will be what next after BTEC? So let us start from BTEC. That is the beginning where lakhs and lakhs of students are aspiring jobs and prospects and future prosperity. Right. Now my topics will be scopes, options, and opportunities. Am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. May, may I continue like this? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Now, the scopes, options, and opportunities that will be available in your presence. First is campus interview. You want job. You want to utilize your knowledge. You want to get satisfaction, and by virtue of that, as a byproduct, you want some earning also for survival and good life. Now, first avenue is campus interview. So all institutes arrange campus interview or in, in situ or outside or pool as mentioned by Mr. Rana. Now make applications. You have to apply for the job. Number one, against additional ads, advertisements. Now these ads can be, you know, newspaper, multimedia, or internet, you have to get it, and you are familiar with this, and against this advertisements, you apply accordingly. But point that, you may apply, you have to apply in a number of places, but you want to get only one job. So you need not get large number of jobs or many jobs, you have to hunt for only one job. When you get a good job, to your satisfaction, stop at that moment. Now, beside against advertisements, there are certain scopes of forced application. This forced application means, sorry. Sir, have you, you know shared any PPT, sir? Uh, this is PPT. So, now, this is not coming, sir. PPT is not coming. Sorry? Is it? Yes, I'm. PPT is not coming. Just a minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Just a minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it available now? Can yes, sir. It is coming. Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it's okay, okay sir. Yes, sir. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so I start from beginning. What next after BTEC? Sir, after it will be January. better if you uh, if you uh, make it full skin. Okay, it's fine. Yeah. 
Yo, we should. Oh, we should? Just over there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, now, now it's okay, sir. Thank you. Now it's okay, sir. Okay. Thank you very much for this. So the topic is job prospects and VTEC projects. What next after BTEC? Scopes, options, and opportunities. Now, Fred, I already mentioned about campus interview, which you have to attend, and your issue is large enough, and arranging time to time campus interview, and you go through that. But it is not compulsory. If you find a job offered by some industry or to campus interview, if you don't like, no. you can go no. other venues. Applications. Hello. Yeah, yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You continue, sir. Okay, fine. Now, now you go through the students. I'm talking to the students who has per job. Now you apply to try for job through applications. You make application against the advertisements given in the newspaper or multimedia or in the internet or by from you know from some other sources. Now beyond that you can apply that is called forced application without any advertisement because you know some of the institutes and organizations industries well and some of them are your favorite. So you can write to them straight way to the CEO or the managing director or the proprietor that we have been taught such and subjects by our teachers and I have developed such interest in these subjects and I have come to know about your concern, your industry and I've been very much interested to join your industry and render my service and prove my ability. Now friend, you may find, you may think that it will be very difficult. Yes, it is difficult even if you apply in 20 places but now there are a lot of competitions. If you, if you apply in 20 places, you can get a, a chance from one organization and they can ask you, okay, send your uh, biodata, we can check and see whether you are fit for us or not. If it is. So this kind of opportunity may come. Now, if you do forced application, definitely choose very good concerns, very prospective concerns. All right. Now, on recommendation. Third is on recommendation. Yes, you can take good recommendation from your teachers, from your professors, from your institute heads, or from other knowledge people who have got good connection with other concerns. You take recommendation from them. They will recommend that here is a student of mine, very good and brilliant and very diligent. I wish that he joins your concern and I'm sure that he will uh, satisfy your requirement. So this kind of recommendation often works very well. All right. Now, point three, job abroad. Many of you are interested in getting job abroad. All right. Besides that, jobs are getting congested, in very lucrative, but very much, you know, short in our country because of growth in population and limitation of growth of industries. So some of you may be interested or may like to or should go abroad. 
or go with good chances. How will you go abroad? Through website. First, you go through the website of different big organizations and industries or institutes, and you can apply. Now, through website. Now, because they try to time advertise global advertisement, you can approach. Now, forced application. Just as I mentioned in the previous case, that forced application, you can straight right to say uh, uh, motors, uh, the international motors, or like that. Uh, or <clears throat> that we are into, we have come to know about your in organization. We are very much interested to join your uh, say Hanford or uh, the US company and. Uh, you are, uh, you can make consider my case. I am interested. So, friend, I tell you that I have got experience in many occasions when I advised my students to go through this channel. Many of them succeeded, and they got very good offers from some industries. So, please try. Nothing wrong in it. You may get, you may not get. What's wrong? And if you apply in twenty places, you may get a response from one place. That is also enough. Then through recommendation. Now, as a professor of IIT Kharagpur and professor of Jadavpur University, many of my young scholars and PhD scholars and business school students got excellent jobs and opportunities through my recommendation. Like that, from the recommendation through the recommendation of their teachers, many students uh, from other departments also got this kind of opportunities. It's a very good, you know, avenue recommendation for especially for in institutes abroad. Now, R&D jobs, research and development jobs, preferably after now, this for this kind of job, you better uh, try after MTech and PhD, after attaining sufficient you know, experience and knowledge and maturity, then it will be better. Because R&D people, organizations, they prefer you know, MTech, PhD with certain experience. Now, fifth one, is attempt and attain get with high grade and grade. Now, Professor Rana has already mentioned to you in his presentation that get graduate graduate aptitude test in engineering. So this is a national examination system, selection system like GE, and this is for uh, postgraduate uh, programs like MTech and PhD. So you apply. In our time, even 30 years back, 20 years back, it was very easy to succeed in GATE because the scope was tremendous, but the candidate was very small. So it, it was not very difficult to get through this GATE. But nowadays, there's a tremendous competition. So GATE has become slightly challenging, and you have to prepare yourself for that. You cannot neglect it. It is not that easy now. So attempt and attain GATE. Now, simply passing GATE is not enough with high grade like J, then all it will be more valued. Now, what are the benefits that you can get from gate? Now, for detail of the gate system, you discuss with your teachers in the department and your old friends, senior friends. They will give you good advice and information and all these things. What are the possible benefits if you succeed in gate, score high in gate? Essential for higher studies in reputed organization institutes and organizations. Now it is a compulsory now. If you want to study, say do MTech in Jadavpur University or Calcutta University or Madras University or any IIT, then you must complete GATE. Without GATE, you will not be allowed to enter in MTech and PhD. So it is a compulsory. So please try hard to go into this. And there are certain institutes where you can enter in MTech or similar programs even without gate, but that will not give you very good benefit. I suggest that avoid that, definitely score, clear the gate and go through that. And then I shall mention you other benefits. Now often needed for R&D jobs. Now R&D jobs, they say DMRL, DRDO, or CSIR, this kind of organizations, they insist the, the gate score. If you cannot complete the gate score, they will not take you. So it's a, it's a compulsory. And nowadays, 
often some industries insisted that you must complete your grade school because selection of engineers or selection of candidates has become now it is a big problem once it is advertised say thousands and thousands of candidates apply and it becomes a mess for the organizers to select so they take advantage of gate je and similar novel examination system and through that so they select candidates so some industries also nowadays have come forward to insist that have you completed your gate score what is your gate score tell us and accordingly they will select you or not Now, next is directly through. Continue. Six directly through UPSC, the Union Public Service Commission exams. This is another set of exam. This is the uh, national, that is central government organized and uh, conducted exam, well known as UPSC, Union Public Service Commission. What are the uh, you know certificates? IAS, Indian Administrative Service. IES Indian Engineering Service IFS Indian Foreign Service Indian Railway Service etc friends it sounds very high and people are afraid or scared of attempting this UPSC but i tell you i have got long experience that it is not that difficult you succeed in UPSC and once you succeed in UPSC your life will be clear and very bright throughout your life time i tell you so please try your heart try your best to succeed in ias ias ifs etc especially for engineers ias and for them ifs and ias also are feasible ias is a general apparently it seems that it is very difficult the double twenties competition really 5 to 5% 6% of the candidates succeed they pass or get pass it but if you are very sincere if you are devout determined and have determination you will succeed i remember about 20 15 years back or 16 years back when i was uh, teaching in a college a remote college say in shuri of west bengal a private college there i came to know from newspaper that two candidates from that shuri you know succeeded in ias ias i was astonished it's so difficult only from a remote place like shuri two candidates have been succeeded they have two, two close friends do you know who were they they were simply two friends sitting side by side on two chairs selling tickets through railway counter that was their job selling tickets at railway counter in railway so but they were so strongly determined i have met them i i went to see them and discussed with them what was the motivation what enabled them succeed they said sir a good willing strength willingness then hard working determination devotion and dedication so friend it is required is not difficult if you have are ready to provide and go through that you will succeed and once you succeed this this will give you the best avenue for your throughout your life now wbcs wbcs exam is also another good avenue west bengal civil service similarly in all states there are civil service sections so west bengal civil service this is slightly lower in standard compared to this upsc but nowadays this wbcs are similar schemes are also becoming as good as or as comparable as upsc after few years of experience they are considered equivalent almost equivalent the second the next is seven diversion and upgradation if you want to divert from engineering to another field of your choice or if you can if you want to upgrade your standard and scope then you can through management programs like iims indian institute of management in not say a indian sub management like joka calcutta or say elabad or ahmedabad and there are many places and this gives you excellent you know future prospect is a good possibility after btech or even after mtech 
you go join these institutes through these selection exams and you succeed. Many of IITs prefer this avenue, and they are succeeding very nice, and they are going abroad very frequently. Next is entrepreneurship. Last but not the least, entrepreneurship alone or jointly. Now you can have your own unit production unit. You produce in something on your own, like manufacturing. All right, the solid manufacturing, engineering manufacturing, and other than engineering, there can be other things also. Consultation. You, you but this requires a lot of knowledge and experience. And after acquiring a lot of knowledge experience for ten years or some time like that, you can become a good consultant and render service to the organizations, and and you can earn a lot through that. You can do business. On your own, together or alone, and marketing. You can purchase materials from one place and sell in another place. You do this job for the institutes or organizations, and this marketing is a good science and technology are coming in the marketability and marketing. So it is not negligible. So many students are doing well in marketing. So at the beginning they were not very happy. But after some time, they said, "Sir, I have not joined any other industry or institutes because the marketing is giving me a very good opportunity. I am very much satisfied and happy." Targets. So where you should apply? What should be your target? Target from very best one, and gradually you come down to lower levels. First one for higher studies, regular programs like B.Tech, M.Tech, IITs, number one. Now there are plenty of IITs, 25 IITs. You can and all are equivalent, all are equally good, and this gives you enough opportunity going abroad and coming back and doing again teaching in IITs. Next to that, in NITs, National Institute of Technologies, these are almost as good as IITs. All right, so don't neglect. Very good opportunities. So you do your B.Tech. Your when you do B.Tech, complete your B.Tech, and want to do M.Tech or Ph.D. For uh, you know higher studies or degrees, you join. Try to join IITs, NITs, reputed universities like Jadavpur University, Calcutta University, or your university, IIT Bangalore, and which Pilani or which uh, you know uh, Rachi. There are many institutes you can come through. Informations available right. for R&D jobs. Where you should apply? CSI labs. The CSI lab. There are 22 CSI labs. Scientific industrial research lab in India, and there are good opportunities. They are very dignified, they are lucrative. So, like say, uh, uh, in West Bengal, in all states, there are CSI labs. NML, National Metallurgical Laboratory in Jamshedpur, LLA in Manisha, uh, in uh, say CMERI in Calcutta, CGCRI, Das and Ceramics Research Institute in Calcutta, and like there are 22 such CSI labs. You'll get plenty of scopes over there, and many IITs join in CSI labs, doing research and R&D, and teaching also. ISRO, there's no need of saying about ISRO. These, here also many many mechanical and electrical engineers, electronic engineers, even chemical engineers are joining over there, and life is very bright there. But Bhava Atomic Research, don't think that they're from heaven. They are all available. They take students from universities like your institutes and other institutes. So attain both. Don't be afraid to attain for DRDO, the Defense Research Development Organization. Excellent. There are thousands of jobs available in our DRDO, but you have to prepare yourself. DMRL, you know, Defense Metallurgical Research Laboratory. Fred, I can mention there are few hundred. You know, many, many, many other. You know, organizations where you can apply. For industries, you start from high level. Same, all right. The railways, Tata, Birla, Bajaj, and many other such well-known, reputed industries. OGC, Indian Air Force, Navy, Army. Earlier days, people were reluctant to join after graduation into these areas. But friend, I tell you that I've got this information. And awareness that these are also very good prospects are available. Now, friend, if you want to succeed in all these mentions, 
there are certain things to be noted, essential requirements. How to succeed in acquiring positions or getting jobs of that? Essential requirement for professional, for any professional success, for any professional success, the essential requirement is performance. Excellent performance, attractive performance. You have to. Now, what is performance? Now the performance here, this is Uh, friends, this performance is a function of three factors. How to acquire it, how to become a good performer. If you can perform, you will be retained, you will be welcomed by industries and organizations. If you are not, then you will be retrenched. Simply say, get out. So performance, every time you have to exhibit your performance. This performance is earned or possible. First is knowledge. You have to acquire knowledge. Knowledge has got no option. By hook or crook, you have to acquire knowledge. We may come the told that knowledge has got no option. First of all, above all, knowledge is a first. After acquiring knowledge, what next is communication skill. If you cannot communicate your knowledge, if you cannot express it, if you cannot speak well, write well, then present well, then your knowledge will be of no use. So your communication skill has to be there. So performance will be, you know, depending on your acquiring knowledge and then communication skill. Friend, not only that, third one is health. If your health is not good, you may be knowledgeable, you may be good speaking, but your health is not good, you are bedridden, so you have got no value. So your health is there. But mind that, these three factors, for performance, knowledge, then communication skill, and this health are multiplied to each other. If one, if any one of them is zero, performance is zero. If performance is zero, everything is zero. So you have to have all these things thoroughly: knowledge, communication skill, and you know health. Now let me come to level of projects. Next, let me tell you about the projects. Now, friend, one of the most important program in BTEC level is the project, the final year project, or pre-final year and final year project. Many times when people go for interview, first of all, they are asked by the interview board, did you have any project? In your undergraduate? Yes. What was the project? Under whom you did it? What was the result? And what is the status? No. These are the very vital questions. Sometimes you have found that only if you can satisfy through your project to the inter in the interview board, you are successful. I have seen few occasions in DRDO, this management was taking interview. And the candidates were asked what project you had. And when they successful, you know, they're satisfied, they said, okay, you, you go. Only five minutes interview. Your project is so satisfactory and so prospective and so valuable that you are through. I remember one incident that in IIT Kharagpur, that is about 2000, sometime 2000. And with many good students, strong students, because I do 
prefer experimental work mainly than theoretical work. So my students mainly did this experimental work. So a group of students was, were doing, BTEC students were doing a very good, uh, very challenging job, hot machining of inconel, very difficult to machine, inconel, a nickel-based superalloy. And it was a challenging job, and this was debuted to me by DRDO. And said, you please find out the method of quickly machining or sub effectively machining this material. So I produced, I prepared in a group of students this uh, project work. One small young girl, very thin and lean, she came forward to me, said, Will you kindly allow me to join that small group and I shall do this work, this project work? I was surprised because it was very heavy work and very hard work. But she was insisting, so I allowed her. She joined that group. And after, along with that group, she completed his, her project and submitted. Not only that, immediately after right, completing their project, they wrote a paper and published in, in a good conference in Delhi. Yes, Delhi. Anyway, in the interview board, she was asked, did you have any project? She said, yes. What was the project? Hot machining of inconel. That was the budding issue of DRDU. So anyway, so she was asked, can you explain what you did? She explained and just in five minutes, she was told, go out. You are selected. Thank you. So this is what she told. Now she is doing that excellent job. Now she has acquired a very high level of high standard work, research work already. Now she's leading a group of researchers in DRDO and uh, in the other places. So this is the possibility, okay? Now, so project is very important. Now we should, now what kind of projects? What are the levels of the projects? Levels, projects can be industrial project. Very practical, large and complex project. PhD projects, training for the true peer R&D for future. Now the PhD work is really a training, a training for research. We think that after doing PhD, we have completed our research. No, doing PhD means now you are able to do start research. You are entitled to, entitled to start research work after acquiring PhD degree. What is MTEC? MTEC means projects training for PhD. Before doing PhD, one should do MTEC projects. And before MTEC projects, they should do BTEC projects, training for MTEC projects. Besides that, simply by BTEC projects, many students get good job. I remember few students, including two guards, were carrying out a BTEC project under Professor Shuman Chakravarti or IIT Kharagpur uh, in a particular area. All right. And uh, then the work was so good. And they published a paper even before completing their four years program. They were invited by MIT of Celtic, all right? And from the other place also, they went there, completed their research work and got job over there. Even before completing BTEC, they could join that MIT and Caltech and Berkeley, a place like that, by virtue of their standard of BTEC work, mind that. It is so strong, it gives us so good opportunity. So always you know, stress upon these BTEC projects. It is so important. Now need for, need or benefit of doing good BTEC projects. What are the benefits of doing good BTEC projects? Now good project comes from very good, you know, topic, good guide, facility and encouragement of the authority and funding. So all these things are essential for carrying out a BTEC project, good BTEC project. Essential part of the BTEC degree. <clears throat> so this BTEC degree, you have to complete because it is a compulsory BTEC degree for BTEC degree. Achieving satisfaction confidence and recognition. I remember because I have already 
taught more than 10,000 students in my life in Jadhpur University, in the IITs, and other places. Out of them, I remember many of them or some of them who did their projects quite satisfactorily with confidence and recognition they came out. They also, still now, when they are asked, they express their satisfaction, confidence, and recognition of what they earned from their BTEC projects. Publication through exhibition, journals, and conferences. They, they publish, they present their papers, research papers in the exhibition through, uh, say, uh, posters and in good journals, world renowned journals, and conferences. Many of my students, while doing BTEC and MTEC, they went abroad and presented papers. Next is securing good jobs and promotions and good chances for higher studies or R&D in India and abroad. Now, for, as I told you that many of the students got good jobs just by expressing or presenting their BTEC projects, the results of their BTEC projects, the standard of their BTEC projects. So good projects, they can, not only that, those who do BTEC projects very good, they get not only good job, they get very good, uh, very quickly promotions also. And because of they are very confident and they're very capable. Good chances for higher studies and r and in India and abroad. So these are the all benefits, minimum that you can acquire. Besides that, you can get a lot of awards also. That will put you forward and satisfaction. So Fred, these are the benefits that you can acquire from your good projects if you can complete this way. Possible types of projects. Now, when you select a project, you should be careful. All right? Because when you are, I have seen in many CSL organization interview board, because I have been there as an expert committee member in many, many, many more than 100 expert committee meetings I attended, and I've got good experience about it. And I've seen many of the uh, chairmen of the organization comes of this interview board, they insist upon the projects. What project you had in BTEC level, MTEC level, and PhD. Where you conducted your research work? Who was your guide? What, what was the institute name? What was the department? All these things were inquired and they give emphasis on those points. Possible types of projects. Number one, research project. Analytical, practical, both are equally important and equally good and prospective, practical, and the experimental work and analytical work, creative work, but they must be creative, innovative, and uh, innovative, R&D, r and type of projects, research and development together, innovative, innovation, the project should be such which will enable, innovate something, a new machine, a new process, a new device, or a new instrument, development of devices, and so on. I remember many of my students produced some devices, excellent devices which were patented also, and they were presented abroad, and by virtue of their showing that, they got good chances, good offers also. Process development, improvement. Now, if you develop a good process, suppose you are, you are expert in machining. Now, you develop certain technique or cutting fluid, or better of application of cutting fluid, or environmental control, such that the cutting force, the time temperature, the tool wear come down, and the tool life improves, the benefit improves, it becomes more economically viable, then you get the benefit. So this kind of research are very much welcome. Process development, improve the process, so that the process becomes the machining, casting, forging, welding, what it might be, become more effective, more efficient, more economic, and more environment friendly. If you can do that, because most of the research going on all over the world, mainly are on the process development and improvement. Material development, development and improvement. So the material development, even if, uh, among my students, Many of the students have 
they do, did their BTEC and MTEC projects, even in PhD level, in development of material, cutting tool material, ceramic cutting tool material, different types. And in one occasion, say a boy, he was from chemistry, chemistry, uh, you know, MSc. They did his MTEC from uh, material science and then PhD in mechanical engineering under the, guide, under the guidance of a group, and I was one of them. The boy did a job uh, on a cutting tool material developments, which is partial stable zirconia. Then he applied for a job in the CNRI, you know, Central Mechanical Engineering Research Institute. So the interview board, many members, you know, objected that he's from chemistry and material science. Why should we interviewed in Mechanical Engineering Research Institute, like CNRI? Then the boy justified that because his job was, his main project was on development of cutting tool material, which is nothing but mechanical. When he explained, he was asked to explain. When he explained the matter, what he did, within 10 minutes, he was selected. And he was asked to join from tomorrow. And he completed his whole career in life, in lifetime, and retired from CMERI since then. And he was very successful. So developing certain materials, like cutting tool materials, or job materials, anything, or coolant or cutting fluid that can enable you to get beautiful, beautiful and excellent jobs and scopes. Next is development of or invention of ideas and systems. Some new idea or new invention of ideas and systems. So this is a very long process. This you can do in a group of uh, students in BTEC level, MTEC level and PhD. And mind that, I'd like to remind you that nowadays, after BTEC, you can join some programs in, in many IITs and universities. That's called dual degree program. MTEC and PhD together. I suggest that you don't neglect or avoid this kind of, or underestimate these scopes. Even in Delhi IIT and IIT Madras, IIT Kharagpur, these scopes are coming up, dual degree, MTEC and PhD. Friends, young friends, you please consider this thing very favorably. Then we will get enough opportunities for this kind of job. Improving quality and capability, capacity and also performance. Now, there's some cutting, certain cutting fluid. You can improve the quality of the cutting fluid by some ad adding materials or some processing, then that will improve the machinability or castability or forgeability or weldability of this kind of manufacturing process, and that will give you high value. High large importance. So improve the quality standard by changing for, uh, the composition or the other the properties of materials, etc. Capacity of some device or material you can do by composition or mechanical properties or electrical properties you can do or nanotechnology which is coming up very rapidly. It is good scope and also performance. Performance, now if you can robotize some activities, that will enable you good success. As Professor Rada has mentioned, what is the scope of robotization? Intelligent robot, not ordinary robots or toy robot. It will be very intelligent robot, one by, operated by artificial intelligence. This scope of robotics is coming up very rapidly all over the world, including India. Now next is expected standard of BTEC projects. What should be standard of the projects? It should not be very low level because many institutes or many departments or many institutes are either do under the condition bound or they are bound to go uh, through poor level you know, BTEC projects. Please, please try to take care of that. Now I am asking the authority, the management, the departments to take care of that. The students should do always very good projects. Because the project is the main, the, you know, the opening for good prospect or job and in future. State of the art, above, at or near. State of the art, above the state of the art or at, at that state or near to that. So it should not be very primitive. It should be high standard. It can be low cost. It can be simple, but the result should be state of the art. The result should be very effective and efficient and economic or environment friendly in that space. 
new attributes and better performing so you you do some work with the with the prevailing uh, device or process or techniques but try to improve the performance improve their activities improve their you know, the range of work uh, by attributes or by changing materials changing design or changing uh, some features you do that so this kind of project is this is called renovating renovating project and uh, our organizations like uh, say uh, tata uh, they are liking this kind of uh, research very much they are welcoming the students work they have done research work this area now friend at the point to remember time bound you must complete the job in scheduled time if you cannot complete if you say half complete or what to complete then you will not get the value the interview board or the taker industry or anybody will not like it your job will be completed in time so take care of that speed up your work be sincere don't waste your time and next is inexpensive mind that maybe if not lakhs millions of students are doing project and these are all expensive now you should also all over the world have been problem with the fund if everybody wants to do experimental work and very costly work then it's not possible for the funding agency to provide the fund so so insist on inexpensiveness your your project work should not be expensive investment should be limited the japanese for example are very famous for this kind of work low cost high standard research project low cost high standard research project without without even without investing more than 5000 rupees you can develop some unique or novel ideas or process or device it is not difficult you can do that so try to do that say simply grinding in a grinding process the performance of grinding could be increased in 1985 by japanese group a group of students and their guides together by about 10% to 20% do you know what they did what they do their expenditure was what they did they, they took a ordinary grinding wheel and pasted some paints on the two surfaces faces and held a cardboard against the rotating wheel so what is price of this zero and painting cost 35 rupees to 10 to 50 rupees and the result was 10 to 15 percent improvement in performance of the grinding process and is so novel technique all over the world it has become very popular they have been awarded and in india also the research work is going on and the industries have taken up this technique even in our country my students also have done a lot of work in this area of grinding so research should be low cost but standard should be high state of the art in standard in effectiveness efficiency economy economic viability and environment friendliness inexpensive now technology transfer and marketability see that try to do that with the help and guidance of your guides and uh, departments that you do something which is transferable which will deliverable which somebody will be interested to purchase your your result your output and they will to help you get the uh, sold to the market and they can you can also earn something from that you can help your institutes to earn from that uh, through that so technology transfer should be a target for your research work or your bigger to bigger project work so whenever you because the, your teachers your guides will offer number of types of objects and you have to select from your own, on your own many students they are very some of them are lazy and they want to avoid hard work and go for an easy going project and the result is very poor so don't be don't do that go for challenge and take up very hard work and do this work successfully which is marketable transferable and which is got futures some possible some feasible projects for btech mechanical engineering so whatever i told till now those are applicable to any field of engineering even science and technology or beyond science but now i am going to give you some 
feasible projects for BTEC mechanical engineering. Type design and level of devices. Design not design of devices. Rovers. You can make full make a full robot, very small size, a tiny size, say with a small degrees of freedom, less, less degrees of freedom, two or three or four or five degrees of freedom, small. A part of a robot, but which is very effective, the kind of improvement or renovation, control, better control, like artificial intelligence control or system control or any new attributes, say sensors. All right? Sensors and the grippers, etc., working models for that. And dynamics, that is also high level work, mechanics based. So, robotics has got a very good or wide range of possibility for BJ projects. And I suggest that instead of doing one at a time, individual, you make a group. One student from mechanical, one student from electrical, one student from electronics, and so on. So, I make a good group and go for this project work and submit together. Jigs and fixtures. These are not ordinary jigs and fixtures. These are all automatic and highly sensor based jigs and fixtures, basically robotized or partially robotized fixtures. So this will actually, these jigs and fixtures help improving the productivity and product quality of the products of industries. So these have got good prospects. Now mechanisms. Gearbox, screw nuts, bearings. So these are all old items, but friends, you can develop gears where the gears in the teeth of the gears are in surface contact. So there's a lot of friction. In case of bearings, there were earlier so surface bearings or sliding bearings, and a lot of friction and loss and wear and tear. Yeah, nowadays, it has gone into ball bearing and then a roller bearing. So in here also, you can apply the rolling mechanism. The ball should be inserted in between the teeth of the gear and they will work with high efficiency. So this is a good challenge. Screw nuts. In the screw nut system, you can insert a ball in between. So instead of sliding friction, there will be rolling friction. So the friction will be reduced by 100 times, 100 with the friction. So life and performance will be increased in many, many units. But nowadays, the screw nuts are used by the recirculating horseshoe type and bearings and bearings also. No, bearings, which has not only gone into the ball bearings or roller bearings or the double or single bearings. There are bearings where there's no contact at all between the upper race and inner race. There is, in, there is either water or any fluid in between. And lastly, there are bearings which are widely used, essentially used in ISRO or in the airspace where there will be bearings with no contact at all. They will call magnetic bearing. Magnetic bearing. All right. These magnetic bearings have got wide scope application in, say, these monorails. Cutting tools. There's no end of. This is my very favorite field. Cutting tools. You can develop new cutting tool materials or new design of cutting tool materials. You develop because the performance of cutting tools depend upon the material, the uh, geometry and how they are used or right, handled. So if you can develop any strategy or a new material or a new technique or new geometry, then it's a great success. And remember that one you know information globally every year about ten billion dollars are utilized for cutting tools per year. It is so important, mind that. Per year, world uses $10 billion for cutting tools alone. So if you can improve the performance of the cutting tool by 5%, that will enable to save you trillions of dollars per year all over the world. Similarly, measuring and monitoring devices using sensors. Measuring device and monitoring device. Now, friend, you can say in the institutes, you can develop Measuring, measuring institutes, measuring devices like say dynamometers, temperature measuring devices, and wear measuring devices. And this will enrich your laboratory and this will have got good marketability also. 
if you can develop a good measuring device or monitoring device that will immediately get good market in the world and you can get the benefit using sensor and if you apply sensors then this will miniaturize the whole system and it will occupy a small volume and this will have got good market prospect now some physical projects for bte design type structure modeling and simulation system of transfer transmission of motion power signal jigs and fixtures inspection sorting packaging system measuring devices dynamometers safety measures and devices so these are hundreds of scopes and please go through that here is another list process development and improvement ntm non traditional manufacturing processes abrasive jet machining electrochemical machining jet to discharge machining and hybrid systems water jet machining abrasive water jet machining ultrasonic machining laser beam machining and what not electron beam machining and this has become regular course curricula and this has given a wide scope and possibility of doing btech projects this area and these are not very expensive research economic and eco friendly machining hot machining so there are certain materials like super alloys which are extremely difficult to machine by any other process excepting hot machining the job is heated locally and you machine comfortably there is one problem came from hot gdo and we solved this problem in id kharagpur cryo machining now this is a very good prospective subject you you apply cryogenic like liquid nitrogen in the form of small jet onto the machining process instead of cutting fluid any cutting fluid that will give you very good performance you know efficiency effectiveness performance tool life and all these benefits and this most important is cryogenic machining that the health hazards is minimized and is environment friendly very much popular very much prospective dynamic machining Foam molding, MQL and IQL. MQL minimum quantity liquid. Even if you apply quantity of liquid, very small quantity of liquid, you apply drop by drop, and get the machining work done. Some more applications possible. These are, you know, slightly uh, unusual. Rib boner, jute extraction. You can develop small machine either manual. Operated or even small power operated rib boners, which are you know, jute extraction. Now these jute, you know, those who have seen the jute plants, this you know, they cut the jute plant in the field and extract the uh, skin on spot by this rib boner, without putting into them water and rotting them and all this. So this will reduce the time of getting this rib boning or jute extraction by seventy five percent. Time will be saved and is very inexpensive. and this is not very difficult and we developed one deep boner in our institutes and it was about to be patented but at that time it was some of it was not continued but there is lot of scope still remains to do research in this area and those who are interested can contact me or they can contact the jute corporation india they will give you lot of ideas drip irrigation irrigation system can be mechanized and this will be not only mechanized and you know economized also this is coming up in a large way solar heater solar cooker still there are scopes earlier it was not very expensive uh, effective but nowadays it can make it more effective with the help of you know other methods waste utilization we produce huge amount of waste but it's not really waste you can convert it into asset and there are many methods i have seen many researchers of phd projects have been carried out even many people have devised developed so human waste utilizer or converter and they have done the phd work also we take and take phd so here the huge scope is there the seeds extractor that the grass rope maker rope of grass maker now these are for villages village people and there you remember that 80% of the people live in village so for them also you have got responsibility to some sub give service bricks making machine modern make methods and even small toys for the Babies. Thank you.
Yeah. Yes, sir. It's a very interesting talk, sir. We have enjoyed it, sir. Thank you. Sir Amit. Yes, sir. So, thank you, sir. Uh, sir eagerly addressed the gathering and shared his spectrum, uh, wide mm. spectrum of knowledge and experience with us. Also, uh, sir, speech is remarkable and audience was with his immense experience and guidance. Uh, thank you, sir, for your valuable speech. Now I request, uh, now I request the Shiranjit, audience, so please, Shiranjit if you Saha. have any question. Oh, sir, I have... Shiranjit Saha, yes, Shiranjit sir. Saha, I think, he has raised his hand. Yes. Yes. So Shiranjit, please, you, you can ask the question. Yes. So you, you can ask the question, please. Shiranjit is there. Mohit Pal. Next is Mohit Pal. Mohit Pal, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Hello, sir. Where it will be better for higher study in abroad? Yes. His question is where it will be better in for higher studies in abroad. Uh, pardon, excuse me. Yes, I can see your face. I can see the speakers. Yeah, Mo Mohit, you can uh, hear. Where you is can Mohit? Both, Mohit, you uh, can turn on your video. Mohit, you can turn on your video and again you ask the question. Yes, say loudly. Sir, I want to tell you, sir, where it will be better for higher study in abroad? Please repeat the question. Sorry? Where it will be better for higher study in abroad? I see. Okay. Very good question. Very relevant question. All right. Many of my very brilliant research scholars uh, went abroad and they are doing excellent over there. Now, when I talk to them, that what will be the advice from my side for my students about going abroad, selection of the country, selection of the institutes, and so on. The first advice that was given by, by many of my very brilliant scholars was or is, said, don't send your brilliant scholars abroad. Don't send your brilliant scholars abroad because the standard of teaching standard of learning, standard of research is higher in India than any part of the world, excepting MIT, Caltech, or Stanford, or very few, very few. So going abroad is very risky. And I tell you that when a group of students were asked to join, uh, going abroad for some joint projects, some of the students went abroad, and after one year, they returned, saying that, sir, we are fed up. We did not get a good scope or opportunity. So we I like to do work in ID Kharpur and under your guidance and in that Kharpur. So be careful about it. Simply going abroad, that is another thing. But going abroad for higher education, real learning, be very careful, very difficult. All right. So this uh, MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Caltech, Harvard, uh, Stanford, then Pennsylvania State University, then uh, uh, Georgia University, and uh, Arizona State University, I can name, and in England, say, uh, Manchester, Ubist, Birmingham, uh, then uh, London, Imperial College. These are very few which you should select. You should not, suppose you go, uh, you get a chance in USA, all right? And you very proudly, proudly say, I have got a chance from USA and should I should join. And your parents also taking pride of into the, in the vicinity. So my son has gone uh, to America. Where he has gone? He has gone to Honolulu. <laughs> it's the capital of Hawaii Dipunjo. <laughs> is it a college? Is it a university? But it is in the USA, no doubt. But you can say, sir, I've gone to USA. I'm doing PhD in USA. But it is as bad as anything in, in, even in our country. We don't have such a bad you know, place like that. 
So be selective. Don't go abroad arbitrarily. Japan, I suggest, I advise, try to avoid going for higher study abroad, Japan. Because Japan will not allow you to learn or go into depth. In that respect, Germany is very good. They will allow you to go into depth. I tell you that one of my best students, Ajay Kumar Chattopadha, who never stood second, and did record in IITs and Jadapur, went, went abroad in Switzerland for postdoctoral work. Two years he was not allowed to enter into the laboratory. Oh. And he was allowed to come back. Then I first then contacted his guides. The guide then assured me, said, don't be upset. It is our method and we are going to take it in our lab. Now then he was allowed to enter after two years and then after completing four years, he was supposed to leave Switzerland. That is the rule of Switzerland that he, nobody can stay more than four years. But friend, if you are a good performer, if you succeed, if you are dedicating time, like Ajay Chattu was my student, he was allowed to stay seven years. Not only allowed to stay, they, he came out after seven years because he was about he was almost tired of staying over there. He stayed in seven years. So it is a performance. So going abroad, even going abroad, I've got many things to say, but time is short, so this is very brief, I can tell you. So don't be tempted to go abroad. That way. Before that, you complete your PhD. Complete your PhD, then go abroad. That is my suggestion. In IITs or universities, in other two, or Singapore or Calcutta, Madras, anyways. Thank you. So again, all of you, if you have any question, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So if you have any question, please. Amit, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Can I ask? Yes, 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 yes. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, myself, Daya Shankar. I am from Mechanical Engineering Department, sir. I am assistant professor here. Yes. And I did my PhD from IIT Guwahati uh, in mechanical engineering department. And after that, yes. I joined here. Sir, actually, uh, your presentation is marvelous, sir. Marvelous. Thank Very you. good. Actually, uh, I have not seen such type of presentation based on the placement and you can say that the uh, higher education's purpose, which is very, very, very essential for nowadays for our BTEC students. You have shown so many things. And finally, you have shown the possibilities, that means possible type of projects which students can able to do, which is further categorized into so many categories, R&D, material development, and further you have also precisely categorized into robot, cutting tools, and finally, you have given some ideas to all of us about the solar waste utilization like that. Sir, actually, I would like to uh, means uh, uh, know your point of view. So, what are the benefits? Some of the benefits for publishing, uh, not a research paper. I can say that the an uh, international conference for a BTEC students uh, following their BTEC projects. What are the benefits they get after, sir? All right. Thank you. Very good. Very good question. Thank you, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Okay. Now, I have already told that I have been sedentary in many selection committee board. So I yes, gather a lot of experience and awareness. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the other members who were present in the board and the nature of the questions that okay. they used to ask. Okay. Many times, especially a good kind of job high level job, these students were asked, you have to say, completely beat have you got any publication? Mm, okay, sir. Mm. I tell you one incident, because incidents of ex examples are the best way of understanding the situation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One of my students, Dovayanti, very thin and lean, girl student, all right, mm. and very slim. And when she got his first first, her first interview, mm -hmm. first interview, Board in IIT Kharagpur, she was asked, have you, have you done any project work? She said, yes, I have done. Alone or group? So a small group. No harm. Okay. They agreed. Because experimental work, normally 
is conducted by a group of students, maybe two, three, four students. Did you get any result? Yes, sir. Have you published it? Then I have presented my work at a conference. Have you? Can you give some example? That is, the, you know, the reprint of your work. She showed one reprint of the paper. She presented one MTDI conference and she got the job. Immediately. Oh, oh my God. That's a great. And this is not a one. This thing happened in a number of cases. And for high level job or who are MTEC or PhD, the first question they are asked how many publications you have? Even when I was selected for uh, professor post in IIT Kharagpur from Jadavpur University, the first question was raised that how many papers I published mm -hmm. and in which kind of journals and what kind of standards. Only by comparing my publication <coughs> with the publication of my competitors, I was selected. Okay. This is the importance of publication. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. So anyone, please, if you have any question or queries. There is one question. Uh, it is in the chat box. Yes. Uh, Zami, Zamidar, uh, Zamidar Brahma, Brahma. Okay. Uh, question is, are you eligible for UPSC exam after completing BTEC? <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes, good question. Yeah. Okay, very good question. This is my favorite question. I should yeah. tell you that I would like to get this kind of question. Incidentally, I was head examiner of two areas, IES and IFS for UPSC for consecutive five years. All right, five years I conducted this examination and head examiner, the main paper setter, the chief paper setter, and head examiner. Five years, so you can uh, believe me about my experience and uh, my, my advice. I found when actually when I was a student, I came from a very ordinary family, not very well off or rich family, and I got the local language, the Bengali language, my mother tongue and not in an English school medium. So I had some inferior complexity, all right? So I never attempted for IES or IES or EPSC exam. But later on, when I came very close to this system, I found that it is not at all difficult. I don't understand why good students do not go for that. This UPSC exam, the, the standard of the questions, because I said the questions, it is as, the standard is very similar to gate question. All right. And more emphasis on BTEC level. But slightly intelligent and any good student, 5% or top 10% of the students of any institute can attempt quite successfully. But what is required? Not only knowledge, the willingness, the eager, the interest, and the challenge. Yes, I shall try. If I don't succeed in one year, one attempt, I shall attempt twice. And you give time for that, effort, give respect to that, and don't take it very casually. Be very serious about it, and take a challenge, and promise you will succeed. In that case, your chance of success will go from 1% to 20%. It is not difficult. It is not difficult. Those who have succeeded, you just talk with them, you will surprise that he is not better than you. But one thing, the very brilliant students, when I asked them, why did you not attend for UPSC? Sir, why should we go for UPSC? I'm more interested in research, uh, say, BTEC, MTEC, and doing, going abroad and uh, doing some novel work. But UPSC means, you know, getting more standard, and good, uh, you know, status, and uh, position, and uh, money, uh, left hand, right hand, uh, money, and all these things. Okay, so that is not their very attract attraction for very good students, brilliant students. One girl student, when she was asked, she scored first, she secured first position in uh, one uh, uh, UPSC exam. She was interviewed, she was asked, are you very happy as your friends because you secured first position? Sir, I'm not that happy as my friends are. Why? Because my friends, the boyfriends, they will get dowry in the order of crores. 
but I am afraid that even if I am first ranker of in the UPSC, I have to give dowry in the order of cross. This is a tragedy. So I am just joking. These are facts also. So this is not a very good, uh, you know, life strategy. That is a different. If you get a special knack for uh, administration position or politics, you go into that. But if you are a, a genius, it's and a good brilliance, then you don't go for UPSC. Stay in teaching and research. Teaching is the best, you know, profession in my opinion. Teaching and research. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So I think we are at the end of this session. So uh, uh, I take this opportunity to express gratitude to our professor Devi Chattopadhyay for graciously accepting our invitations and consenting to be a keynote speaker for these today's sessions and. Everyone, we uh, learn lots of things from sir. So now I would like to request our registered sir. Uh, please, sir, sir, please, you offer your vote of thanks for this uh, session. Thank you, Dr. So I'm happy to be a part of this program. Excellent. So as from the beginning, I've seen um, but at the same time, I am uh, privileged to propose a lot of thanks for this program, where especially the great teacher of Sir E.A.B. Chattopadhyay, Sir, the way you explain, it reflects uh, greatness and how, how much you change that uh, 10,000 students you taught in their life. They are all fortunate to be a, a student of you, and we are also fortunate to be a part of this program. And all the participants learned a lot from you, especially when uh, Dr. Daya Center mentioned that all of them are understood and all of them uh, learn from your uh, experience. So how important it is to do the good project. The selection of the project in a better program will form a road to their future careers. So from ICFI family, we are thankful to you for accepting our invitation and making this program more successful. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again. Thank in you, future, also, we will expect that you will support us. And the way the department uh, organized the program and uh, nearly 280 uh, to more than 200 students in this program from various institutions, including Tripura University, then from Assam then from West Bengal, Tamil Nadu. So it makes this program as a national program. Certainly, with the great speaker, we are able to achieve success because of our uh, professionals, Lord Sir, encourage the department, everybody, to make this program successful. So I hope in future also the mechanical engineering department will take more initiative and organize the program. So these programs will help the students to make their career successful so we should build the students across the country to come forward and uh, build great india thank you thank you once again to everybody to make this program successful thank you very much sir thank you everybody thank you very much sir thank you thank you